Well, good morning. I have to wear a coat because of the microphone, but I'd like to keep this relatively informal. What I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about what we're doing and why we're doing it, then go to some slides. And if you have questions as we're going through, I'd encourage it. I've been involved in this for 35 years, and I assume everybody understands some of this stuff at, at times. The best way to describe what we're doing in the U.S. Geological Survey is think of a family photograph album. You have pictures of kids. Uh, I used to talk to high school kids and say, do your parents ever take your picture for before you go out on the prom? Yeah. Why do they take your picture? Inevitably, the kids say, well, to embarrass us. I say, well, yeah, that's true. I'm a parent. That's part of our duty and revenge. But the main reason is you will change over the years. And if we have that photograph, we have a record of what you look like at that particular time. And that comes into play when we look at family albums. We look at family members who are deceased and kids when they're growing up and, and newborns and that sort of thing. The same principle applies to the planet, the land mass of the planet. It is dynamic. It's changing constantly. We don't think it is, but there are changes going on. Look at the um, ash flow we had at Kingston here just a couple weeks ago. We happened to have, the ash flow happened at 1 a.m. Our satellite flew over at 10 a.m. So we got a clear picture, and I have some copies of that both in the presentation and on the table over here, of what the area looked like. And we can see before, right after, and then we'll follow that later to see what changes take place. Volcanic eruptions, Mount St. Helens, uh, Katrina, all that. We record those events from the satellite and we can look at an area before, during, and after and measure the change. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, you know, NOAA had a program you know, they had put on the Big Bang Theory. Yep. And they you know, said the, the Earth is still, I mean, the universe is still changing, it's moving farther on out. Now, can you take your data right now and project what it's going to be in 100 years or can you, you know, what No, we are not. Uh, that would take enormous resources. And we're looking at more immediate problems right now. Now, we do have aerial photography from very low altitude of areas taken in the 1930s. And we can look at an area from the 30s, 40s, 50s, up to 2000 and see how, is it, how it has changed. Projecting how it'll be in the future is based on two things. There are the natural events that'll happen, and we're looking a little bit at that, but it's, it's a very complex issue. And the man-made political events that happen, that's one we stay away from, frankly. We leave that up to states and local governments. Our job is to collect the data, and how those data are applied to resource problems gets a little more complicated, and we pass that on to other agencies. We believe there are, but I don't know who they are. <laughs> Federal government's big, okay? All right, now, in the 1960s, the USGS uh, looked at, US Geological Survey, looked at some of the Apollo and the early Skylab photographs, and they could see landform changes in a way that, or landform features that they had never seen before because they backed up 200 miles and could look at the whole view rather than just what you can see from 10 miles away or something. And a decision was made, what if we had a series of Earth orbiting satellites looking at the land mass of the planet and measuring the changes? And a decision was made in the late 60s to establish that satellite program. And there had to be a central receiving station somewhere. Where are you gonna put it? If you put it on the East Coast, the technology at the time said, then you can't get coverage over the West Coast because it'll be out of view of the antenna, the satellite will. Okay, same thing when it's flying over at San Francisco. If you had the antenna in the East Coast, could you get reception? No. So they said, okay, put the antenna somewhere in the center of the country. And they defined, the engineers defined an area as far north as Fargo, North Dakota. It could have been worse. <laughs> and as far south as Topeka, Kansas. As far east as Des Moines, Iowa. As far west as Lincoln, Nebraska. At that point, guess what happened? Politics. 
And the city of Sioux Falls went to then President Nixon and said, look, it'll cost you $5 million to set up your antenna and your system uh, and budgets are tight. Why don't you do some intelligent thinking and have us in Sioux Falls build the building and you buy it back just as most people buy a house over a 20 year lease purchase agreement. Then it's not a big hit. You know, when you buy a house, you often don't just write a check. You pay a down payment and you pay it off over 20 years. That in the 60s, early 70s was novel thinking. And uh, it won. And so the antenna is built in Sioux Falls and that's where we are. So that's the background. Our main antenna is in South Dakota. Now, the kicker to that story is by the time we got the antenna built, communication satellites were widely used and we could have bounced the signal off a communication satellite and had the antenna anywhere in the country. Maybe somewhere warm in the winter comes to mind. <laughs> Last week we went 86 hours without the temperature getting above zero. And a week ago yesterday when I went to work it was 23 below. And I was thinking, yeah, anywhere warm in the winter would have been just fine. <laughs> but we're there and we're established. And we've got about 650 employees uh, collecting the signal, processing it, and getting it out to the user community. It's our main job. Users all around the world. What is your biggest problem that y'all face? What kind of, for example? Uh, actually, our biggest problem was Congress told us to charge for the processing of the data. So if you wanted a satellite picture, we'd have to charge you for the cost of processing it. And that was running about $400 because it's a lot of computer time. Put it on a CD and all that business. And then we decided, what if we dumped it on the internet? What would be the reproduction costs? Zero. So we are now putting all of our data out on the internet at no cost. Now, how do you pay for the staff time? You have to cut some employees. And we did. That's our biggest problem. It's always a fight with Congress. We've had congressmen who don't like any space programs. I was in the room when a congressman said to the weather people, why do you need weather satellites? I can see the weather satellite picture on TV every night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, never mind. <laughs> and we've had, more, we've had serious congressmen say, okay, you got your picture of the planet. Nothing ever changes. You don't need any more pictures. You're done. Well, we've laid out the groundwork and made the case that no, we're not done. When Mount St. Helens went up, in 24 hours, enough timber was destroyed to build a million homes. And careful planning had to be done to rebuild that area around Mount St. Helens. And they used before, during, and after satellite images to help do that planning. That's a payoff. Uh, Katrina, how many, how many homes were destroyed? And how could the emergency response people get into certain neighborhoods? Well, if they had a satellite image of the area, they could see how wet the areas were. They had other means, obviously, ground checking. But to get a big perspective, the satellite imagery helped a lot. So that's what we're doing. Okay? Let's go to a few slides. And again, if you have questions. Um, all right, remote sensing. I have to be teacher for one minute. Our whole thing is based on remote sensing. And what that means is you're doing remote sensing right now. You're observing from a distance. You're measuring what's going on from, from a distance. In our case, with aerial photographs of Kingsport, and I'll have these out for afterwards, there's an aerial photograph taken from 20,000 feet up of Kingsport in 2001. When you look at that, you're doing remote sensing. You're learning about an area without actually touching it, without actually being running the camera.